Welcome to Old Bethlehem's Bible study. I'm Pastor Robert Laverne. Tonight I will be reading you a scripture and a prayer. Our scripture will be coming from the book of Job, chapter 19, verses 25, 26, and 27, where Job's reply to his friend Beldad about the accusation that Job had sinned. When Job looked at his friend and says, I know that my Redeemer liveth, and that he shall stand upon the latter day upon this earth. And though worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh shall I see God, and I shall see him for myself and not another. I just read to you three verses from the book of Job, chapter 19. Verses 25, 26, and 27. Let us pray. Eternal God, we thank you for giving us another day. We thank you, Lord, for watching over us last night as we laid in the image of death. But you rose us this morning. You touched us with your hand of mercy. You opened our eyes to see another beautiful day and all the things around us. Even the worry of the coronavirus, the coronavirus, Lord, you still give us comfort in knowing that you have all power in your hand. So bless us this day. Open our hearts and our minds. And let us receive your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Tonight, our special guest for Bible study will be coming from one of our associate ministers, Reverend Johnny Alvarado. Hello, brothers and sisters. My name is Johnny Alvarado, and I'm going to be sharing a Bible study with you this evening. Uh, I don't even know if it's a Bible study. It might just be uh, what it really is, is what God gave me on, uh, on an early morning when I was spending time with him uh, not very long ago. And when I read this and it knocked the wind out of me, I mean, it revealed so much to me about what's going on in the world today. Uh, it just showed me how real God's word is. It, it just showed me how real God is. And uh, I mean, it just, it, it gave me such a, uh, a reverence, a new level of reverence and awe and a fear of the Lord. Um, it, it, it's just amazing. So uh, I'm going to share that with y'all today. And uh, we're going to be reading Isaiah chapter 23. And we'll be bouncing around because I just highlighted of uh, the things that really, really spoke to me. And uh, we'll go into chapter 24. And uh, so after that, I got some other stuff I'm going to talk about that goes with it that uh, God continued to reveal to me about everything. So, uh, Let's pray really quick. Holy Spirit, help. Penetrate people's hearts, change their lives forevermore so that we can all become closer to Jesus. Amen. So we're going to start Isaiah chapter 23, verse 1. The mournful, I'm reading out of the Amplified. The mournful inspired prediction, a burden to be lifted up. Concerning Tyree, well, you ships of Tyree returning from trading Tarshish from Tyree is laid waste so that there is no house, no harbor from the land of Kittim, Cyprus. They learn of it. Be still, you inhabitants of the coast, you merchants of Saddam, your messengers passing over the sea have replenished you with wealth and industry. If we all remember the first thing when this COVID-19 hit, when the coronavirus hit, the first thing that happened is the traveling began to stop. Traveling stopped from one country to another and slowly but surely more and more countries came on and more and more countries came on board. And they said, we're stopping. We're stopping the traveling. We're stopping the flying. It, we have to shut it down. And when that happened, 
it began to affect the market. It began to affect industry. It began to affect all of those things. God just said it in Isaiah 23, right there where I was reading. And then he goes to the point where he tells them to be still. That's what he told us. That's what he told the entire world, to be still. Thank you, Lord. And if we jump down to verse 4, it says, Be ashamed, Sidon, mother of the city of Tyre, now a widow bereaved of her children. For the sea is spoken, and the stronghold in the sea lay, saying, I have neither tra travailed nor brought forth children. I have neither nourished or reared young men nor brought up virgins. When the report comes to Egypt, they will be sorely pained over the report about Tyree. Once again, I remember I looked on CNN after all this began to happen, after all the traveling stopped, after all the market began to crash and it dropped so quick. I, I looked on CNN on my phone and there was a man and he was holding his head and he was just like undone. It's like there's nothing he could do. He was just blown away. And when I looked at it, I was like, wow, they're getting people's attention is being, is being brought forth to what's happening in this world. And it started affecting everything, all kinds of things. Restaurants started shutting down, everything. We're gonna talk more about that stuff, but uh, let's go on. If we jump down to verse eight, and this gets very specific on who's doing this and what's happening. Verse eight. Who has purposed purpose this against Tyree, the bestower of crowns, whose merchants were princesses, whose traders were the honor of the earth? Let me tell you something. COVID-19, the coronavirus. If, I don't know if you know this, but corona means crown. It means crown in Spanish. Right here, it says, who has purposed this against Tyree? And then it answers it, the bestower of crowns, the one who bestows crowns. Listen who the, listen what it says in the next verse. The Lord of hosts has purposed it in accordance with the fixed principle of his government to defile the proud and all the glory and to bring into dishonor and contempt all the honored of the earth. Overflow your land like the overflow of the Nile River, O daughter of Tarshish. There is no girdle restraint on you anymore to make you pay tribute or customs or duties to Tyree. The Lord is doing this. It's exactly what it said. It asked who did it, and then it answered and said the bestower of the crowns, and then it got so specific, the next verse says, the Lord of hosts. It didn't hesitate. God's word is true. This is something that is being done by God. And we're going to see as we continue to read and just look into God's word. I'm not teaching anything. I'm reading the Bible. That's all I'm doing. I am simply reading the Bible. When I read this at about 4 a.m. in the morning, it knocked the wind out of me. I mean, I, I, I came to tears and I began to get scared because God was showing me how real he is. He was showing me how much he's involved in everything that's going on in the world. Yeah, my world is this big compared to what's going on. And a lot of times I find myself just there in my world and in the world of my family, in the world of work, world of church, world of ministry or whatever it may be. But it's that big. And God began to show me, I am in everything. I am doing what I see fit to do in this world right now. I'm not a doom and gloom preacher, doom and gloom uh a person that goes about trying to tell people uh, turn or burn, you're going to go to hell. No, that's not me. But this is what God revealed to me. And I had nothing, there was nothing else for me to do but share it. I didn't ask to be here to do this Bible study. I was inv invited. I was invited and I'm honored to be here. And there's nothing else for me to tell you except what I believe God said. So let's go back into the word. <laughs> And right there it says, the Lord of hosts has purposed it in accordance with his fixed principles of his government to defile the pride of all glory and bring into dishonor and contempt 
all the honor of the earth. God is doing this in accordance to his kingdom, to his government. He's trying to come and set up his ways. As we continue to read, you're going to see how his ways have been neglected, how his covenant has been left, how things have been broken, how people have separated themselves and ignored God probably the majority of their lives, maybe their entire lives. And, and then you're going to see how he's coming. And he's here. And he's making himself real in this entire situation so that we can know that, hey, God is talking right now. He's not going to leave us hanging, especially those who believe in him. Listen, listen what it, it says. We're going to go down to verse 17. Verse 17 says this. And after the end of 70 years, the Lord will remember Tyre and he and she will return to her hire and will play the harlot, resume her commerce with all the kingdoms of the world on the face of the earth. So there's going to be a big effect to the marketplace, just as you're seeing right now. And it's going to be it's going to be hit hard and it's getting hit hard right now. And things are probably going to get worse. I'm not here to prophesy. Like I said earlier, I'll say the same thing again. I'm reading the Bible. That's all I'm doing. I'm reading to you what the Bible says. And this is what it's, and that's exactly what it says. So, and then he's going to give her attention again. It says Tyree called her a woman. It says he's going to give her his attention once again. And she's going to turn back to him. Then it says she's going to return to her old ways, return to her hire and begin to do her commerce, going to begin to do her industry, her marketing, her uh, her business. She's going back to business as usual, going back to the old ways. You know how many times I've done that and I've had to repent? Oh, man, it's hard. It's hard because you, you get you get your life changed by God, by an encounter with him and getting saved, delivered, redeemed, set free, filled with the spirit of God. And then you get on fire for God. And then the quickest way to turn from God is to begin to ignore him. And then we, we, we fall in love with other things, with work, with ministry. We fall in love with money, with uh, whatever the case may be, a person, drugs, alcohol, gambling, smoking, whatever it may be womanizing whatever the case is we fall in love with something else and we give it more attention than we give God and then we turn back to it but what he's saying right here about the financial situation is this listen and then he then he said this is what he's going to do once Tyree returns from turns to the Lord then turns from him and goes back to goes back to business as usual this is what God's plan is after that so now we're going to read verse 18, but her gain and her hire, the profits of Tyree's new prosperity will be dedicated to the Lord. Eventually, it will be, it will not be treasured or stored up for her gain will, will be used for those who dwell in the presence of the Lord, the ministers that they may eat sufficiently and have durable and stately clothing suitable for for those who minister at God's altar. God is going to make money come in to his ministers. God is going to make his his people be taken care of. Look, the moment this stuff began to happen, things got better for me financially. They got better. It hit about a week later, more income started coming to me. Thank you, Lord. That's all I can give glory to. My wife got laid off. That situation got better. More income started coming. Look, God's got a plan. We can't be afraid. We can't let our feelings and our emotions and what we don't see take over. We've got to keep trusting God. And I'm not here to say that God's going to throw money at you. It's going to fall out the sky or a check's going to come in the mail or whatever. I'm not saying any of that. All I'm saying is God gonna, is going to do what his word says. And he says he's going to get the, his money. He's going to get money to his people and he's going to take care of them. And yes, I have continued to work every day. My job has not slowed down. It's been 
business as usual. So things are moving forward. And uh, I'm so blessed and I'm glad I can take care of my family. And uh, that's what it says. That's what God said right here. I'm believing it and I'm standing on it. And uh, when I read all of this, when I read that part, what I just read to you in chapter 23, I got fearful because I began to look at what God was doing. And I said, my God, you're so involved. You're so real. And I began to weep. I began to weep and I was very, very humbled. And I'm gonna, and something else happened in the midst of me crying, in the midst of me tearing up, in the midst of me saying, thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord. I, I know that you're real, I know that you're real. And I just begin to just thank him. Even in the midst of what's going on in this world, I begin to thank him. I'm gonna share with you what he, what he brought over me just so peacefully and calmly as we continue to read. Go to chapter 24. God gets very real in chapter 24. Behold, the Lord will make the land and the earth empty and make it waste and turn it upside down. Twist the face of it and scatter abroad the inhabitants. How many cities do you see right now that have nothing going on? That have nobody, the freeways are empty. It looks like a uh, I couldn't, I don't even know how to explain it, but there's nothing going on. The world is empty right now. Because why? Because God chose to make it that way. Let's continue to read. We're going to go down to verse 5. <clears throat> the land and the earth are defiled by their inhabitants. This is why this is happening. It's very clear. The land and the earth are defiled by their inhabitants. Because they have transgressed, transgressed the laws, disregarded the statutes, and broken the everlasting covenant. Therefore a curse devours the land and the earth, and they who dwell in it suffer punishment of their guilt. Therefore the inhabitants of the land and the earth are scorched and parched under the curse of God's wrath, and few people are left. I told you, I'm not a doom and gloom preacher. I believe that Christ came that we may have life and life more abundantly. He has, he's full of mercy and grace and love and compassion and kindness. But there is a time where we must suffer consequence. If we do wrong and we have no repentance in our heart, if there's no turning or no changing, we will suffer consequence. I do the best that I can to manage my money and my finances. I'm not the best with it and I'm not perfect. Far from it. But I can tell you, God has honored what I've done and he's helped me and I've seen it and I know that it's God helping me. I give no one else the credit and I give nothing else to credit. And I know some people that are hurting right now and I'm not here to say that they're being punished or they're being done wrong because it's hard on them. Absolutely not. It, 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 it can be twofold because God is, God is gonna test his believers also. There's going to be tests that are coming. Do you know that faith that has not been tested, it cannot be trusted. He, it may be hard for a while, and then God, boom, will come through, and he will show you. It's not my business when he comes. It's not my business how he comes. But just one thing's for sure is that he will come, and he will take care of his people. He'll tend to your situation. I promise you, this Bible says time and time again that he will come and see about his people. He loves you with an everlasting love. So, but there is transgressions that have happened. You know, governments and, and all kinds of, just if you look, if you look in the world, the people that handle the money have been handling it in ways that it's re they're really, they're really not caring about the people. When you get into politics and all these decisions that they're making, and I'm not a political person, I'm not political, I'm far from being political. But I know one thing, I know somebody that's out for themselves when I see it. And every time someone comes in to do something, to be elected for something, they always wanna take out what's happened in the past that somebody's established and establish their own and put their name on it because it's about them. I don't know why they're like that. People, who, people that come before them, sometimes they do good things. I don't see why they won't just empower that. But no, they take money and throw it at stuff to demolish what the last person has done and then make something of their own. Doesn't make sense. 
Sometimes something's in place that's good. Why can't we just empower that? Why can't we just help the people? Well, it's a lot. It, the reason it happens is because people are about themselves. The people that are in higher ups, they're about themselves. They're not about the people at all. And I believe that's what God's, God's biggest desire is for a king or for a leader to be for his people. Christ laid down his life. I don't see too many other people in high positions laying down their life. Nobody else has ever done it. Nobody's done it. Let's continue to read. So there's been a transgression of his laws, his covenant, and things that have gone wrong. And no repentance. No repentance. No change. No desire to change. Because it's all about self. No one's going to lay down their life. No one's going to take up their cross. And no one's going to follow Jesus. They're not going to do it in that way. But if they do, I promise you, if we can find a leader that will do that, man, you'd see this world change. You would see the world change. God gets more specific. Let's go down to verse 9. We're going to read verse 9 and 10. Isaiah 24, verse 9 and 10. <clears throat> no more will they drink wine with the song. Strong drink will be bitter to those who drink it. The wasted city of emptiness and confusion is broken down. Listen to this. Every house is shut up so that no one may enter. What's going on right now? What's going on right now? There's a shutdown. I'm going to say it once again. I'm not teaching anything. I'm reading the Bible. I'm reading God's word. This is God speaking to you just like he spoke to me. Man, if we don't see God in this entire situation and what and and the fact that he spoke about it right here in his word, then it's going to be hard for us to see God. He is the only thing and the only person that we can turn to right now. No person, no person is going to save us from the coronavirus. No, 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 no. But Jesus said, I will send a keeper and he will keep you. And that's the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. And if we go on, listen what it says in, in verse 14 of chapter 24. Isaiah 24 and 14. But those who have escaped and remain, lift up their voices. They shout for the majesty of the Lord. They cry aloud for the Mediterranean Sea. What we do is we continue to worship the Lord. Remember when I told you? When, when, I, when I read this and the fear came upon me and the tears came, I just began to thank him and thank him and worship him and praise him and re remind myself of how good he is because I was seeing that everything that's going on in this world, God has a part in it. God has a hand in it. And I was like, wow, God, I don't want to turn my back on you. I don't want to ignore you. I want to live a life that's pleasing to you. Would you help me? power of the Holy Spirit and in the midst of all this that's going on in this world and everything that he was showing me in the Bible revealing to me that he's real and that he's involved and his hand is in it immediately the presence of God came over me and he just began to tell me this is my word and it's true and he reminded me that I had the gift of everlasting life he reminded me of the cross the death burial the resurrection the blood of Jesus Christ and I'm justified by justified by his blood he began to remind me of all that and if what's going on now is true and he says it in his word he assured me that what he says will happen to me on that day will happen i will live forever oh my god i begin i could have woke everybody up in the house because i was so happy i was just full of joy i was overwhelmed and then as i continued to read throughout the days we don't have to go to it because I'm just going to go through it really quick. I was in Romans and I read in Romans 11 where Paul speaks and what jumped out to me is that it says this. It says, Paul says this in uh, Romans 11 verse 13. He says, now I am speaking to the Gentiles. Now I am speaking to the Gentiles. What God is saying is that he's speaking to the Gentiles, to the people that were born that are, that are born, uh, born children of God through faith. He's speaking to us. 
And then I continue to read and he says, I'm revealing things to you right now so that I can stir up my people, stir up my Jewish sons and daughters and reconcile them back to himself. That's what he wants. That's his desire. That's Christ, Holy Spirit, God the Father are always about reconciliation. They want you with them. God the Father wants you more than anything else. And as, as far as the, uh, the money flowing to the ministers, whatever the ministry looks like, God's going to provide it. in this time. It doesn't matter. Christ, I want to bring everyone back to the memory of what Christ's ministry is. If you go into the book of Mark and you look when he began his ministry, he began it simple. It was simple. He said this, I have good news for you. The kingdom of heaven is within the reach of your hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. It's not complicated. It's not complicated at all. A lot of ministries are different, but there's something that God told them to do. And those things take finances. You have food pantries, you have homeless shelters, you have bus ministries, you have teenage ministries, you name it, prison ministries. There's so much going on and all those things take finance to run. And I'm not here to ask you for money. I'm not here to say, help me, the doors are gonna close. I'm not gonna show you a video of a, of, of a child in a third world country with flies on it. I'm not gonna do that. But what I'm here to tell you is that you can trust God. God is gonna take care of his people. So I thank you. It was a very short Bible study. All I wanted to do was what I said. And I'll say it again. I'm not teaching anything. I'm simply reading the Bible. Thank you. I don't know about you tonight, but somebody may be crying, but I come to let you know that God can make it all right.